right guys, so we often talk about the problem with the Roush blower for the 18 and up cars. If you've been around me, you know I have an, uh, an 18 up Roush car and you know that I'm working on creating solutions for the cooling for those. Uh, the issue that we have is that in 2018 and newer Mustangs, we've added direct injection to these vehicles. So you have now a second set of fuel rails, second set of injectors, second set of wiring harnesses and all that stuff is tucked in neatly in the valley between the two cylinder heads. So every uh, supercharger company on the market, save for Roush, unfortunately, they changed and manipulated their design to take into account that loss of space in the valley. Uh, see, most of the intercoolers previously were spaced down into the valley between the two cylinder heads. And now with that additional hardware down there, everyone like Whipple, for instance, has gone and inverted their blowers and they've put the rotor packs down low because those are already a small narrow case they're already a tight package and they've gone up top for their intercoolers so you can see here this is the lid of a of a three liter uh, gen 5 whipple we've got two full side-by-side -side bricks here which when in comparison this is what the this is actually a billet upgraded roush intercooler uh, brick so this is even larger than what would come just stock inside of this lower manifold here um, so what we're effectively having in the Whipple is we've got a probably, I don't know the math, uh, and I apologize, maybe I should, but I don't. Uh, I don't know the math, but we've effectively got almost twice the amount of cooling that we have in a Whipple and uh, the other modified top mount intercoolers, low mount rotor superchargers on the market in comparison to the Roush. So in this instance, uh, we have the Roush off so that we can kind of show that that's what the lower manifold looks like on the Roush and we brought in one of our prototype uh, jokers and PNR have made this for us for our Roush and we're going to be replacing this on my car to see what the cooling improvements are but if you're a Whipple guy or if you're looking at an intercooler or looking at rather a supercharger I wanted to share the intercooler from RIP with you so you could understand why we suggest the uh, the Roushes, the Edelbrocks, or sorry, the uh, Whipples and the and Edelbrocks over the Roushes. It's because of the change in the engineering where you have much more core, much more surface area, uh, much more cooling, and therefore your IET2s are lower and therefore less misfires, less issues, etc., etc. So, anyway, wanted to share that with you guys while we had this apart here. And hopefully, this is a good tech information for you and uh, helps you understand why we push certain products. Um, we're, we're doing this to educate you and empower you to make good choices with your money. Um, if you want to go down the Roush uh, rabbit hole like I'm doing, uh, it's going to cost you more to effectively reach the same goal that you would with an out-of-the-box Whipple. So uh, stay tuned. We are going to be working on solutions like this for the Roush guys because we know that there are guys who bought their car with a Roush on it and we're going to have to create a solution for those guys regardless. So stay tuned. We'll have more on that later. But for now, that's the comparison between a Whipple and a Roush interval. What happens on these Roush cars is you get misfires, it goes too hot, it explodes the catalytic converters, and now you have multiple misfires and potentially an engine failure, and that's exactly what happened to me. I had multiple misfires, I had all eight cylinders misfire with a cat protection when it went to limbo because I was wide open throttle when it happened. Um, and so it actually took out two cylinders. It took out number two and number eight. It cracked both pistons. And so I had to put a built motor in my car because they weren't going to warranty it because I did the blower myself. It wasn't a Roush car. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. So that's the problem that Roush guys get put, you know, because Roush is the one who denied my warranty, by the way, not Ford. Yeah, because come to find out, Roush, when they tell you that it's a warranty through Ford, that's a lie. It's a bold-faced lie. You have a Roush warranty that your Ford service writer will, do will contact and do the work and do the Roush warranty for you at your Ford dealership. Right, yeah. So Roush has the ability to deny your warranty claim just the same as Ford does. Wow. Yeah. So they don't tell you all that, you know? <laughs> That's the, the fine print. The real <laughs> fine print. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, so it's a problem. But we're trying to create a solution for those guys right. because we yeah. know that those guys exist. Yeah, my dad's got this idea that I love the idea of, you see all this